Medical disclaimer. This podcast is intended for educational purposes only and does not serve as medical advice. Kate and John are not medical professionals. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, or prevent any illness. Always consult your physician before making lifestyle changes. Welcome back to the Illuminated Path. This is episode 31. Very exciting. Yeah. (laughs) What are we talking about today? We are talking about sleep and some tips to get better sleep and aligning your circadian rhythm. Yeah, and I want to I want to preface this entire episode with um these are things that I desperately am trying to do. <laughs> I don't sit here as someone who has this all figured out. Sleep is probably the biggest area of my life that has room for improvement. Mm. Um but I certainly know a lot here and so do you. So I'm excited to share. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about all these things because these are things that we're recognizing are important and want to share that and, you know, share what we're working on and invite people to try some of these things for themselves and hopefully they can improve their sleep. Yeah, absolutely. How's the week? Good. Um, Happy almost Easter to those who celebrate. The day this comes out is a couple days before Easter. So um, we're going over my family's house with everyone and with our niece new so, niece <laughs> i love her um yeah and then i'm just very happy with the nicer weather finally coming in it's been like 50 degrees i more want like 70 degrees but i'll take 50 we're getting there <laughs> we're almost yeah. there it's almost april so um yeah i mean like q1 is right just about over yeah so it's crazy um And I just wanted to share an update on my skin. It feels really good. It is less red. It is doing and feeling so much better. It's been about four weeks since I've been taking my supplements and just really taking care of myself and making sure that I'm eating right, hydrating, you know, getting movement and getting sunlight. I mean, having the weather be nicer makes it a lot easier to get outside and just having my skin in the sun feels so good like i can just tell so yeah i'm really excited about it yeah i mean i know i definitely feel like even your um attitude and energy toward your skin has seen a major shift as well yeah which is an important component to it so i have to definitely trying to stay positive so yeah absolutely how about you um things are good um learning uh, how to do forex trading, which is really exciting. I've always been really curious about that, so I started a course and um, learning more about that. And I have actually the day this comes out, right? Mm-hmm. I have a new song out today. It's available on all streaming platforms. You can look up John Casanova, J O N C A S A N O V A, uh, and the song is called "Shoot My Shot." Yay! So new song, new music out today. Um, I'm planning to, you know, keep that momentum and do it. I think that um, something I talk a lot about is in Big Magic, the author talks about embracing good enough. And like I could have sat there and picked these parts of these songs apart for weeks, but I need to embrace good enough and getting it out and getting practice and starting to experiment with like my sound and what I like. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just going to really keep trying to put out a song a week and go from there, kind of see what I do and don't like and just keep getting better, getting practice until I eventually do the album. Go listen to it. Yeah. Check it out. Um, so let's talk about the circadian rhythm because well, let's, let's first define that, right? Because we all kind of, I think when you say circadian rhythm, people are just like, oh, yeah, go to sleep at a good time, you know, mm-hmm. wake up. But what is that really? So our circadian rhythm is the 24-hour internal clock in our brain that regulates the cycles of alertness and sleepness, and it's mostly by responding to the light changes in our environment. Mm. So we wanted to talk about this because sleep is such an important component for just like our overall health. It is a component of like an area for prioritization when we're talking about holistic health and encompassing everything, this is such an important piece. And unfortunately, a lot of people are running on very low sleep. 
And like, you know, we've said before, we don't have children. So I know that that alone is a huge component to creating, you know, dysregulated sleep cycles and not getting enough sleep. So there's definitely things that you can potentially try to improve that, get even a little bit extra sleep. Like your sleep is so important. It heals you. It, mm -hmm. it gives you energy. It regulates so many things in your body. I mean, it's such a crucial component. I think that's a big thing too when we talk about holistic health because sleep is when your body's repairing. That's when you're in rest and digest. That's when your body actually has the ability to repair and recover from the inflammation. So to be skipping sleep, it not only affects your physical being and your, um, you, you know, like the way that you're operating, the way that you're feeling and the inflammation in your body, but it also affects things like your blood glucose. It mm -hmm. affects your hunger and your hormones. So everything can get thrown out of whack if you're not in a good schedule. Yeah. Definitely affects your mindset too. Absolutely. I mean, I know that like I'll get cranky if I have a bunch of days in a row where I haven't slept good. And yeah, it's like, man, I need to catch up on sleep. And, you know, sometimes we end up doing that. Like we're having some trouble falling asleep here and there. And then it's like it gets to the weekend and we kind of try to sleep in, catch up on sleep. But then that just messes us all up anyways. So, yeah, yeah we'll get more into that. But yeah, you know, I think we found that we really like on the weekend need to just maintain our sleep schedule because the second that we sleep in or we have a later day and I think we just decided we're going to try like one night a week, we'll stay up like an hour later or something and try that. But yeah, I mean, it can really throw us off. And especially as business owners, it's difficult because, you know, your, your schedule is always fluctuating and everything can get affected by it. Right. Yeah. And that's a big piece. Like we're going to talk about kind of morning things and nighttime things, but a huge piece to your circadian rhythm is it does want consistency. Yeah. A consistent sleep and wake schedule is going to be the best for your body and give you just the most benefits from getting that good sleep and sticking to a schedule. Yeah. So why don't we kind of start there? Because I think the discussion today isn't really why you regulate or why you want your circadian rhythm in the right place, because that's kind of a, goes without saying, you know, you can do your own research there. There's plenty to learn and figure out. But today, what we're really talking about is the how. So let's start with the morning, right? And things you can do to help regulate having a consistent sleep and wake time. Yeah. So one of the very first things is getting sunlight in your eye within the first, like, 30 minutes of waking up. I've, I've even seen like less time within the first like 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. And that's a tough one because number one, if you wake up before the sun rises, I think that they say to kind of do it a little differently, but like use like a light therapy. Yeah. Um, light, which I have used. They, yeah. they, I mean, it's artificial light. Don't get me wrong, but they do help. They provide some amount of benefit. The, the issue with those and the research on them is really, you need one that's strong enough and going to be relative to like at least a fraction of the light you would have gotten outside. So a lot of those are too weak to mm -hmm. provide real benefit, but definitely something you can look into. Yeah. I mean, our body normal cycle like wants to wake up when the sun is rising because right. again, the circadian rhythm is by re regulating, by responding to light changes. So when mm. the sun is rising, we need to get that light in our eyes and, and teach our body, hey, it's daytime, it's morning, it's time to wake up. Yeah. And we'll get, when we get into the nighttime, we'll, we'll kind of talk a little more about why that also impacts your sleep and right. where screens come into play. Yeah. So this is one that we are definitely working on and we're trying to wake up and take the dogs for a walk right away. Yeah. This has been the hardest one. Yeah. Truly. Like we've, <laughs> we've had days we've done it. We've had days that it's been so gloomy outside that we just like haven't really felt like it. And it's been one of the tougher ones. Um, but what do they say about overcast? Just a little To get longer. a little bit longer. Like when it's overcast, the sun is still out right. and there's light. So stay outside a little bit longer. They recommend like, I feel like I've seen all different numbers, honestly, like yeah. 10 minutes. If it's overcast, try to get like 20 minutes. So 
Yeah. If you have a dog, that's a great yeah way to try to do it is getting outside for a walk with them and getting the sunlight in your eyes. Yeah. So sunlight in your eyes and on your face uh, first thing in the morning, that's, you know, a lot of holistic practitioners talk about that, a lot of naturopathic doctors. So that's a huge one. That alone can provide a lot of benefit. Yep. Um, screens in the morning. Mm. And this is not just for like your sleep and wake and like regulating your circadian rhythm, but screens in the morning can just like really start to stress you out. Well, I think it's more like inputs. It's more, you know, your mental state and the number of inputs. Like Mm -hmm. when you wake up in the morning, you think about, you know, I got to feed the kids, get the kids to school, walk the dog, get my sunlight, right? Whatever. The second people will check emails and it's like you're already starting the day with that. So the second you start throwing in emails, social media notifications, work, text messages, all that, you're starting your day with all of these stressful interactions and inputs that Mm -hmm. start to flood your mental state. And it's too much information at once and it causes all kinds of problems and that can get into, you know, do you start your day stressed? And then are you more likely to eat when you're stressed? And so it can really disrupt your momentum into the day. Yeah. I use do not disturb mode overnight. And so it's not like I don't look at my phone at all in the morning, but I try to like check the do not disturb notifications because nothing is showing. Mm. See if there's anything of importance and then like leave it alone until, you know, at least a little bit of time. Like that yeah. I've actually woken up. Yeah. I um, check, I check the, I check our investments in the morning <laughs> um, and it's, we have some crypto investments too. So it's, it's kind of funny because those markets don't close. But I think for me, the big thing is just being detached from it. Like crypto is very volatile and that creates a lot of opportunity, but it also means sometimes it's down a lot. So I'm, I'm not like attached to um, the position. Like if it's down, it's down and it's fine, whatever. Um, so I, I think that's part of it too, is like understanding kind of where you are. Like it doesn't stress me out. To me, it's it's a fun thing that I can look at in the morning. Yeah. Um, but, but then there's also like social media. I have my um, my business page set up with a quiet mode. Yeah. So it won't even tell me I have notifications until my quiet mode is over. So I can't see if some stuff happened overnight. When quiet mode ends, it goes, hey, you have notifications. Right, which so that's is That's another like really just a tip. Like if you have a hard time doing it on your own, set a quiet mode, set do not disturb, like set up some things to help you keep those boundaries that you're trying to set for yourself. And, and I think that's so important because especially in business today, like everything is got to be showing up, got to be consistent, got to be there. And I think we've largely removed the being human component of it, especially in health and wellness, because a lot of people who work in health and wellness are really cringed out by social media and having to show up like that and sell themselves. And, you know, that's, that comes with the territory, but finding balance and setting those boundaries can be crucial. Yeah. Um, the next I want to talk about is cortisol. So cortisol is a hormone that is the, it's your stress hormone, but it is also the hormone that is waking you up. Mm. And it is at its highest point in the morning and they're, that it's supposed to be like that. And its purpose is to wake you up, yeah, give you that bolt of energy. You get that spike in the morning. Yes. So a huge one is coffee and waking up and immediately going for the coffee. Because if you have coffee right away, you can be affecting your cortisol levels negatively. You're, you're increasing them. Whereas it should be that you wake up and you have that natural spike of cortisol. And then it starts to gradually taper off. Right. It's like I'm awake and now I'm here's the day. Yeah. Versus when you have coffee, you're like exponentially increasing that cortisol spike, which can lead to all kinds of symptoms, you know, from stress and messing up things with your adrenals and um, anxiety, all kinds of symptoms. So yeah, definitely something to consider. So is it 60, 60 minutes? I've heard 90 yeah, they recommend number one, eating first, yep. which we just did a whole episode on coffee. So eat first, eat first. It's recommended that you eat within like 30 to 60 minutes of waking up. I know if you like are doing intermittent fasting, that might not apply to you, but yep. mostly like if you're a woman, 
it's really beneficial to eat within the first 30 to 60 minutes and then don't have your coffee until after you eat a full like hour after you wake up. And if you can't wait that long, give it 30 minutes, like try something, try to give yourself some time to wake up. And I think it's like anything, you know, like you can start to develop that and start with 15 minutes and start and then, you know, slowly increase, go to 30, go to 60. Yeah. But, um, I, I'm going to be honest, I have not done that one much. I know. I tell you all the time, yeah. like, stop grabbing your coffee first but thing. But I have <laughs> done it. And yeah. I will say when I do it, I do feel better. Yeah. I honestly love, like, allowing some time and then waking up and then, like, enjoying my coffee. Because, <laughs> like, I just feel like I enjoy it more rather than. My second than, cup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, and then one thing I didn't put in our notes is drink water. When you wake up, yes. your body is very dehydrated yes. after you sleep. So especially before your coffee, drink some water, which I yell at you about. Too. <laughs> yep. But especially if you're someone who has processed foods, um, particularly salty foods, if you eat at a restaurant, if you're having meals high in sodium, like those things, you will lose a lot of water when you sleep. Yeah. So, And I mean, the, to where we're at in our diet now, when we do those things, I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm parched chugging (laughs) yeah 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 keep a water right next to your bed and like do that right when you wake up i always drink my water when i wake up a lot of biohackers and health coaches i've seen recommend at least 16 ounces of water immediately upon waking yeah so note to us too we're trying that we're working on that working on that one and we're having our water first thing (laughs) um so let's kind of get into nighttime because this is really, I think, what people think of. But I, I think before we go there, let's just reiterate, like your sleep routine is also affected by your morning routine. Yeah. So absolutely okay. review those things and implement them how you can and try some things for sure. Um, but when we get to nighttime, this is really where it's important to have a solid sleep routine. And something that's supporting your relaxation and getting to bed at a good time. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have you introduce some of these, but I want to introduce the three two one rule. Okay. Um, because this is one I've heard a lot, and it I like the idea. I've never done it, and I think I actually do really want to try it. So the three two one rule is three hours before bed, no more food or alcohol. Two hours before bed, no work. And one hour before bed, no screens. That includes phones, TVs, and computers. Now, this has also been modified to be the 10 3210 rule. Mm. So the 10 is 10 hours before bed, no caffeine. And then the zero is the number of times you hit snooze in the morning. Mm. So, briefly, we won't get into all the science on that, but briefly, When you fall into a sleep cycle in the morning, you hit snooze, you fall into another sleep cycle that you essentially have to interrupt. You're not doing a full sleep cycle, and that can make you feel much more tired. Yeah, it's harder to get out of that because you're literally like super groggy trying to wake yourself up out of the middle of a sleep cycle that you've just allowed yourself to kind of fall back into. Yeah, so that's why sleep experts say ideally you don't hit snooze. You got to just get up. Mm -hmm. Um, Kate's laughing because this is difficult for me. <laughs> um, so that's the three, two, one rule or the 10, three, two, one, zero rule. Um, do you want to kind of talk about some other things we can do at night? Yeah. So going back to screens and what you just said, um, a big piece of that is like the blue light that you're getting in your eyes. And again, going back to the definition of circadian rhythm, it's the, you know, the light affecting your alertness and sleepness. So if you are having these screens in your face, you're confusing your brain. Like your brain thinks it should be awake because there's light. It's intaking light. So it's not helping your body to understand it's time to start producing melatonin Yeah, and be sleeping. So do your own research on this. Um, But I have, I think, briefly explained this before. But basically, the photoreceptors in your eyes are relying on a lack of light to start building melatonin. Mm -hmm which is not a vitamin, it's a hormone. And that helps you ease into your sleep cycle. And so what happens is the more you're on screens, and like I'm absolutely guilty of this. I think I realized recently I'm, I've spent a lot of nights like from screen to screen 
but the more you're on screens, the more you're inhibiting that production of melatonin. Right. So what happens is people are on their phone all night. They're watching TV all night. You binge Netflix all night. And then you get to bedtime, you're not tired because you haven't gotten the melatonin production that you should have had from that lack of light in your eyes. Right. The melatonin is, again, your hormone that promotes sleep. And as like natural light, like in the morning, it's your, your, you want to wake up with the sunrise. And at nighttime, when the sun is setting, your melatonin production starts to, you know, be created and it increases gradually until it tells your body it's time to sleep. But if you're disrupting that with all sorts of lights and it's mm -hmm. not having that natural progression of less and less and less light from like the sunset, it's it's confused. <laughs> it's all it, it's also kind of like, you know, how cortisol spikes in the morning, your melatonin spikes at night. Yeah. And so just as we rely on that cortisol spike in the morning to wake up and enter our day energetically, mm -hmm. we rely on that melatonin spike at night to get into a sleep cycle. Yeah. So, um, and it's also like, I've seen people take melatonin. I've taken it myself. I don't really understand the whole concept because it's not a vitamin. It is a hormone. Yeah. So I really would not recommend taking melatonin. There are other things you can take to help you sleep. Absolutely. That mm. like are more natural herbs, like lavender. Oh, get some chamomile. passion flower, some passion flower tea. That is all you need. Passion flower is great. It's like comparative to benzodiazepines. It's it's comparative to taking like Xanax or Ativan. Honestly, when I got off benzodiazepines, I relied heavily on passion flower. Well, then we need to go back to drinking that. Yeah, it sounds like <laughs> I do. But passion flower is a good one. You can also mix passion flower with some valerian root. Valerian is known to be a sedative. Um so there's a lot of things you can do. The melatonin I, I took for a long time before I went on sleeping pills and did the whole thing with medication, and it never really worked for me. And at times I took very big doses. Yeah, I mean, I've heard people say it's helped, but it's not great because it's supposed to be produced naturally by your body. So I feel right. like when you're giving it to your body synthetically, if you're not taking it, then what happens? Your body's unsure of how to start creating it again so it definitely can just mess with that yeah and there's also a question of how is it created is it you know pure how clean is it whatever but um i i yeah i mean i think that's an area where i would almost immediately turn to herbs because it's so simple mm -hmm. and the benefits of using something like lavender um even chamomile Valerian passion flower, those are herbs that can really help you chill out yeah. and get into a, a sleep cycle. Yeah. And um they just help you like help your nervous system slow down. So yeah. Um going back to the lights, because I wanted to mention just like, yeah, we talked about, you know, the blue light and your screens and TV, phones, whatever. But um just the lights in your house. Yeah. And I yell at you all the time when you turn on any sort yeah, of you light. You don't like any lights on in the house. No, I prefer darkness, but I really prefer natural light. It's unfortunate our house doesn't get a ton of natural yeah. light, but I, I just love natural light. So another thing is like keep it dim in your house at mm -hmm. night. Like once the sun is setting, also like set the lights lower. Yeah, challenge yourself to not have lights on in every room or be directly under them. I mean, consider your skin is your largest organ. And so when you're exposing your skin to all that light at night, you're also impacting your melatonin production. Mm -hmm. And there's like, you know, I'm sure somebody will argue on that, but it really depends on like the light frequency, the wavelength. Um, but most people have LEDs in their home, which do affect your melatonin production. Yeah, they're powerful. And I've also seen, and I would love to do this, is people replacing some of their light bulbs with like red mm, light bulbs. Yeah. Because that's more like, I don't know the science behind it, but it's no, no, just, no. it's better for you. Like yeah. red light is more like signaling like the sunset. Mm. So. Yeah, that's interesting. Something else to potentially look into. So talk, talk to us about sleeping before midnight because both our naturopaths said this to me i don't fully understand what the deal is or why 
Yeah. And I was just looking it up to try to get like a good article to share, mm-hmm. but there are, there's definitely some stuff out there. Um, about 90 minutes before midnight is really like a very important time where our body is getting the most healing. Mm. So my naturopath says try to go to bed by 10 o'clock. Yeah. He, mine, mine said to me, very important that you're asleep by like 10, 10 30. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's why that's the time. And if you are up past midnight, like it's just, it's, it's adding stress to your body. And also I feel like you're kind of missing that melatonin spike at that point. And yeah. Your body's very confused. Well, I, I think that's part of it too. I believe that melatonin spike is in full swing around 10 PM. Yeah. And at that point you want to be asleep to help your body really get into the deeper stages, more healing stages of sleep. Right. Um, very interesting. <laughs> so the last thing we have here is alcohol and caffeine. So I don't, I don't think we even need to get too into caffeine because I think we did a lot in our last episode and we've kind of made the point like caffeine, it's in you longer than six hours. That's, you know, that 10, three, two, one, it's, it literally says 10 hours before bed, no caffeine. So, mm-hmm. so if you're going to bed at 10 o'clock, that means noon Yeah, is like an ideal cutoff time. Right. So caffeine's in you quite a bit. And as we discussed in some of the other studies that we showed in the last episode, it does affect your sleep. Mm-hmm. But the big one is alcohol. And I mean, you and I know this from personal experience, as most people who drink do, it affects your sleep big time. But I don't think people get like to what level. So part of your hangover is you didn't sleep well. Right. You didn't get into that deep sleep. Right. So I'm going to post a study in the show notes here uh, from the National Institute of Health, which talks about basically how alcohol kind of acts as two stages, right? So in the first stage, it's a sedative and it might make you a little drowsier. It also might actually help you get into sleep. Mm -hmm. It can uh, shorten sleep onset latency, right? So it's reducing the amount of time it takes for you to fall asleep. But REM sleep is suppressed and there's a longer latency to get into REM sleep. And then there's actually a decreased REM sleep in the total length of the night, meaning it might help you fall asleep in the shorter term, but overall, you're not going to get as restful sleep. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the second half, the second stage, they actually said sleep is disrupted, which means you're in a verbatim in this, it says poor quality sleep leading to a downward spiral with insomnia being self-treated with alcohol to reduce to produce a rapid sleep onset. So people end up in this cycle of using alcohol to fall asleep, getting asleep, but never getting restful sleep. And so understand that, like if you're drinking, you're not going to have like great, deep, restful sleep. Your REM sleep is going to be affected. That's really where you're in those slower brainwave states. You're really healing and doing all that. But alcohol is going to affect the quality of your sleep. Yeah. I mean, we don't drink anymore, but when I did, I I would have no problem falling asleep after having alcohol. Yep. And I would wake up every night. I would wake up at like 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. And I'm wide awake. Can't even fall back asleep. I Ugh. would feel terrible. I'd have yeah. a headache. I, I'd be exhausted, but my body would not like go back to sleep. I just, it happened so many times. Well, I think that's kind of why this study is really interesting because they broke that into the two phases yeah. which was has absolutely been my personal experience is like I've always struggled to sleep alcohol helped me sleep but then I never got into a deeper sleep and I always woke up usually like you know desperate for water but it, it absolutely affected my sleep and I absolutely did not sleep through the night when I was drinking yeah so anything else on sleep I don't think so. Try, you know, listen to this episode again, review it, review some of the stuff we talked about. Um, As always, we'll put, you know, the chapters in here so you can kind of jump to different chapters, but um, try it, you know, see what works for you. And there's, there's absolutely, um, you know, things to try to help regulate your circadian rhythm. And um, I'll have that study in the show notes. Yeah. Take what you, you know, take, take, small things, take all of these things and 
just try to incorporate little things at a time and see if they start to help your sleep. Yeah. And definitely check out that uh, three, two, one rule. Ten, three, two, one, zero. <laughs> I think I'm going to try that. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? No. Go check out my song. It's out today. Yay. John Casanova, Shoot My Shot. Friendly reminder, this podcast is sponsored by New Moon Apparel. That is our Zen motivation and moon-themed clothing line. You can shop designs at newmoonapparel.com. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.